Hi, in this video I'm going to be modifying a lever type digital speed controller for a Haswing trolling motor. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. This is an exterior view of the head unit for the Haswing Pro Tour and I'm going to open up this top section here so you can see the wiring and the electronics inside. Okay, so this is the lid that I've opened up, and up in here where you have the red and black power wires, that's going to the voltage meter there. And then, of course, you have your positive and negative power supply that goes down into the shaft for the motor. And then you also have this coming out of the motor, which is a set of three wires that go to the potentiometer in here. And then these two wires that go to the little beeper alarm section there. So I'll be disconnecting all these things to shorten the shaft. And I do have a video for that that I'll list in the narrative section. Now this is the potentiometer that I'm going to be removing. And you can see those two screws in the center where the three wires go into. Okay, so I've removed the screws in the back, they're over here, and now that allows me just to pop off this lid, showing the inside of the controller. And as I open this up, a little bit better to view, you can see that that's the voltmeter here that came to these red and black wires that are on the outside, so that makes sense. And then you've got your 5-pin connector here and you've got three wires coming to this potentiometer here which is a red, black, and it looks like a green and then down here, if you can see it there's a blue and yellow wire in here and I'll show you a close-up on that when it's removed and that is a micro switch that also runs inside this shaft that when it rotates and it's some kind of switch that goes to that P350 motor. I don't know what it does, but it has a blue and yellow connection here. And since I don't know what it does, I'm not going to need it. Okay, what I've done here is remove the wiring from these two connections here and here. And then also cut the wires to the potentiometer and to the little micro switch in there. Basically I tried running this as it was stock with the Haswing Pro Tour R 1.0 and it started out good and then it went wacky. So then I tried it again by adding the 1K resistors on there as Bassman Strikes has shown us before works and it ran good for a little while and then it went wacky again. So now I'm going to try a whole different approach and I'm going to get in here and remove this potentiometer. So in order to do that, I have to remove these four screws here. And then this whole section will pop out. Now, down here, below this tab here, is the center detent. And that consists of a ball bearing sitting on a spring. So when you disconnect all these things, you have to carefully lift this assembly apart so you don't lose the spring and the ball bearing. Okay, so I've removed these two clamps, that's about the best way I can describe them, and carefully lifted up this assembly, and here you can see the ball bearing sitting on a spring. Now, to get in here to remove this, now I have access to these two screws, and then this whole piece will pop off. Okay, so I've taken apart the assembly here, and this just slides in there, as you can see. It lines everything up. This comes off, and then like I said in here, there's the half moon. And so what I'm going to try and do is cut this length down just a little bit, so I can try and use the Haswing stock potentiometer in this setup. Okay, it looks like I need to make this a little bit shorter so everything will fit underneath the cover. 
And I don't want to cut any more off here because this half moon is going to lock the pot into place. So I'm going to cut it off this end here, which has this hole. And that's more or less just a guide for this bolt that holds on the handle. So I'm going to take about a quarter inch off that, cross my fingers, and hopefully everything lines up. Okay, so this is the potentiometer removed from the Haswing. And I clipped enough wire length on here so I can do some rewiring. And this has this little knob on it that I'm just going to pull off. Don't know what I'm going to need that for. And then there's also this little piece here. Well, I'll have to take it off later. It's a little weird shape here that is also on top of this. So I'll remove that. I'll probably have to pry it off and we'll see where we go from there. I still need to shorten the space inside the box so the lid can go on. And so I've taken apart the Haswing pot by taking off this back section here, the two screws, and then sliding the wires through it. And then I'm also going to pop off this. It unscrews at first, and then it just pops off. This little thing here. So, I'm going to try and reassemble everything, but as you can see, there's these threaded parts here, and I happen to have some extra potentiometer nuts that I'm going to put on there just to lock it in place and then see if that helps me pick up any more space and then the, run the wiring through the side here, drill another little hole that way it won't be sticking out the end. Okay, so I did a couple more things that I think is going to make this fit in. First, there was this little nub here that the wires all came through and it was like insulation or some kind of plastic sealing so what I did was I just cut that off and that took about almost a quarter of an inch in the height away and then I'll just seal that up with some silicone. Then I want to run the wires out without adding any thickness so I just kind of notched out this little area here in this ring of insulation that this cap goes onto. So that should be enough to make everything lie flat and fit inside the top of the box. Okay folks, try and stay with me. If you're going to get confused, this is probably the spot. Now the reason I don't have all the complete step-by-steps with this is because this is the first time I did it, didn't know if it was going to work. Now that I've got it to work, I'm going to show you what it looks like. So, first of all, this is the piece that I cut with, and then drilled out these new holes. Not going to use it. So, this is the Haswing stock potentiometer in here mounted using the mounting screw holes that it had before and then what I made here are these spacer blocks on either side that I cut out of poly cutting board and I sized them this way putting this back in what I did was I put the brackets back on and locked it in so it would be at top dead center or zero for testing. Then I slid in the potentiometer into that one piece here that had the keyhole cut in it, slid it in until I got this zeroed out with 12 volt power running through it. Now it wasn't exactly dead on so I had to drill out that keyhole like I did on my other project to 1564s so I could slide in the pot, stem, or shaft, whatever you want to call it, slide it in and then put a little bit of marine goop in there to keep it in place. And that was all when I had it zeroed out with power. So, now that I had that done, I measured the size that I would need for these blocks and what these do is they take the place of this. This was the piece that was sitting here. And what this did, by sitting on here, it kept the pot from rotating. So, I had to do the same thing and that's where I came up with these two spacers. And so when I put everything together, it turns like it's supposed to, but this stays solid. And then I might add a little bit of goop on the bottom of them just to keep them 
in their place, but once the lid's on, these things aren't going to move. So that's pretty much the end part of all this intricate stuff inside. I'm going to put it all together and then I'll test it. I finished the wiring and the assembly of this box and everything fits in there nice and neat. It's connected to the 5 pin connector and I made my own color combinations with the connector and kept a note with them and I'll keep them with all the other extra parts for this so if I ever have to go back I know what my connectors go to. So that's very important. Whatever colors you decide to use just make sure you remember what they are. Now I'm going to put it all back together and do one last test. Okay, so I have the Haswing Pro True R 1.0 hooked up, and you can see the prop on the left side of the screen. And on the right over here is my lever speed controller with the Haswing pot in it. So I'm going to go ahead and power it up, and we'll see how it goes. That's the three beeps for it being centered. I'm reading 12.4 volts on there, so let's give it a go. There's the center D10 of the switch. Okay, there's something I want to add. When I was doing the testing in the garage, everything was fine. And then I put it in the bucket test, and I wasn't getting full power as compared to the stock Haswing that I had measured before. So what I figured out was the lever doesn't travel far enough to give the pot the full power. So what I ended up doing is right in here, I just got in here with a utility knife and shaved down both sides where the stop hits. And if you're looking for a place to stop your cut, right there there's that little cross piece in there. And I did it flush with that, and that gave me full power in forward and reverse. So this is the test setup. Here is the motor, along with the ammeter, and the water tank along with the P350 modified lever speed controller and then down there is my power source. Okay, I've already got the power hooked up to the motor and down in the lower center screen here is my ammeter where I'll be reading off the values and I'm going to go to full amp draw forward then zero and full amp draw in reverse and I'll be calling out the numbers Forty one point five amps. Zero, now reverse. And that's at about forty one amps. So I'm receiving full power with this unit, so everything works like it should.
Now that the project is done, I want to mention a couple of things. It was fun and challenging to get this to finally work, considering it wasn't designed for this use. But overall, this probably isn't a project that most people would like to do. A lot of it was eyeball engineering, and I just got it to work, so it would be kind of hard to duplicate this again. But if you want to make a wired remote using the Haswing potentiometer, you can mount it in a project box like I did in another video, which I will reference in the narrative section of this video. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comments. Thank you.